Hi, DevWorld. That's the emoji for DevWorld. This is the official emoji, even though I hacked up the last bit, so it looks like the DevWorld logo. Um, hi, I'm Katie. Here's my Twitter and stuff. Feel free to tweet me because I've turned off the notifications on this Mac. <laughs> there we go. I love emoji. I love how broken they are. <sighs> this is going to be a fun talk because my click is slow. TLDR, because computers, you should use Unicode everywhere and you have no excuse not to. Unicode is extremely powerful. If you're not using Unicode, you're making everyone in the world sad. Good? Good, okay. You might see Unicode represented as something like this, as a 16-bit hex or as a 32-bit hex. This is the letter A. The letter A has a certain code. This is the Japanese R. It has a completely different code. Every single symbol in Unicode has its own unique code. Because we have up to 32 bits, we can have up to over a million different characters and each of them has a unique code. We can have things like E, and then you can have an accent. And you can combine the E and the accent to get an E with an accent, and that's kind of cool. Combine this with the Unicode Consortium, which is an amazing name for an organization. The Unicode Consortium uh, defines exactly what characters go where in different page tables, and this works for every language, except for Japanese. Except, it works for Japanese. So, Japanese character sets. You have hiragana, katakana, kanji. What you don't have is, is emoji. The Japanese liked their mobile phones. They liked being able to send little tiny characters to each other on their mobile phones back in the 90s. You could send a penguin to your friends and it could receive a penguin on the other side. Thing is, this was all using, instead of Unicode, it was using private user space or private address space. So the penguin on your system might not match the penguin on mine. So there needs to be some sort of consolidation here. Early 2000s, a uh, telco in Japan went to the Unicode Consortium and said, hi, can we add emoji? And the Unicode Consortium said, no, but um, it's just a fad, yeah? No, no, it's not just a fad. So a couple of years later, they went back and asked again, hi, we've consolidated our Unicode and our emoji all over all our platforms. Can we get it into the standard? And Unicode said, yes. So 2007, we had some wonderful symbols come into Unicode, including the uh, penguin and such as we saw before, and nothing happened. Then Apple came along. iOS 2 slash 3 in Japan was the first one to have emoji, but only in Japan if you had a Japanese SIM card. So when Apple was developing the iPhone for Japan, they added this in. Everyone's happy in Japan, iPhone sales skyrocket. iOS 5-ish, they decided, hey, let's just uh, have this as an option somewhere for everyone. It wasn't enabled by default, but someone found it. Story goes that one day somebody was playing around on their new shiny iPhone something something and went, huh, I can send a picture of poop to my friends. And so they sent the picture. And then their friend picks up the phone and goes, hey, how'd you do that? And so it starts spreading like wildfire. Because this started on iPhones, people think that Apple invented emoji, they did not. Y'all didn't invent this, right? Okay, good. So, this is 2010. 2014 is when we get our first update for emoji. These are all valid emoji. A chipmunk is valid emoji. Um, this is a, a card file in the bottom row um, when we used to use paper to uh, transmit information. Um, we also have a paper clip which likes to keep those together. Um, also on the end here is a um, man in business suit levitating. Who here remembers Wingdings? Yeah? This is for backwards compatibility. This is from Webdings, the successor of Wingdings. Um, has anyone ever received a capital J in serif font in one of their uh, emails before? Capital J in Wingdings is a smiley face, which gets converted back to, in a normal font, J. So you need a Unicode smiley face and you need a man in business suit levitating. This is 2014. We have more emoji since then, though. 2015, we now have a unicorn emoji. Yay! 
and tacos because tacos are Australian smiley, a really important addition. <laughs> but the last one here is the uh, sign of horns. But this has two points. This has one code point and then it has a second one. That second one is for the color. This is a really recent addition to emoji, even though you may have seen it on the Twitters and the Insta faces and such. What this is is two glyphs coming together and being composed with something called A0 with joiner. So you pop them together and it does a thing. So this is all fine, except uh, if we go back a bit to some of the uh, earlier emoji, um, I posit that the implementations were a little bit rushed. Um, we saw that Apple was the first ones to go about this. Uh, Android kind of wanted to keep up with Apple, so we're going to have some fun here. Um, who was here yesterday for Vicky's uh, speaker tradey thingy? Remember the heraldy shield stuff? Um, turns out that there's not a lot of uh, color back in the day when it was all black and white. Um, so if you're writing down how to present heraldy shields, you had to use uh, dots and slashes to represent the colors. This is how you represent yellow. This is a yellow heart. The image on the left is what's defined in the Unicode standard. The one on the right is what Twitter's using. This is yellow. Yeah, say it with me. Yellow, yellow. Android 4.4. Yeah, so we're getting in a bit of a hairy situation here because uh, the original Android artist, I'm not sure who, um, decided to take the uh, speckles a little bit literally, uh, stubble maybe. Um, but it doesn't stop there. There are so many issues when you try to compare the same character across platforms. Uh, this is a flushed face. Um, on most platforms, it looks like a, <gasps> as opposed to the end uh, Android, it looks like a, Mwah which is absolutely a completely different emotion, of course. Um, this, this is supposed to be hugging. You know what I see? Microservices. <laughs> the one on the end is emoji one, which is a completely open uh, Kickstarter backed emoji character set. Uh, the first one before Twitter open source theirs and they make it look like a hug because I'm a Windows girl. And this is what I think hug is. This is from MSN, and I think of it as like a hug. But mm, jazz hands. Um, here's one. Uh, we've been doing a bit of clapping already this conference. Um, when you clap, you normally put your two thumbs together and your palms facing each other. Um, I'm not sure whether you notice the one on the end, what's happening with the thumbs here. Um, have you tried clapping your hands with the thumbs <laughs> facing the wrong way? Um, if you've got like big rings or knuckles, just be careful how hard you do that. Um, the one on the end is Windows 8. Um, I hope Microsoft people have hands, but yeah. Um, oh, here's one. Um, can anyone take a guess what these ones are? Yes, the man with the hair. This is blonde. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's like one blonde in there, sure. Um, but this just keeps on going. There are entire uh, scientific papers trying to show what all these issues were. Uh, thing is, the one on the end here is uh, Facebook's question mark. <laughs> yeah. And these two, this is the canonical uh, example of what's going wrong here. The only difference between these two is the eyes. One is grinning and one is grimacing. Can you guess which one's which? Who thinks it's the one on the left is the happy one? Who thinks the one on the right is the happy one? It's the one on the left. But unless you're into your anime, you're not going to know that that means smiling eyes. So there are all these really broken emoji. How can we add new ones? To add new emoji into the uh, Unicode standard, you just have to submit a proposal and it needs to get accepted by the Unicode consortium. Um, things that will get you accepted if you're thinking of submitting one of these things is if it's uh, for backwards compatibility. So here we have uh, some of the examples from Yahoo Messenger. They had a cowboy, so now Emoji has a cowboy. Um, if it completes a set, uh, one of the earlier versions of Unicode did not have a complete set of zodiac symbols, so that had to be fixed up. Um, and also if they're frequently requested, so enough people nag them about unicorns and tacos and yeah, 
Um, things that won't get you accepted if it's overly specific. So here we have wine, martini and tropical fruit drink. We're not going to be adding Manhattans or anytime soon or old fashions. Um, you're never, ever, ever allowed to use any trademark logos or branding. <laughs> yep. Interesting fact, uh, Apple updated their uh, icon for, for mobile phone. Can you guess about when they did that? This is the four rows and the five rows thing. Yeah. Um, also, you're not allowed any memes or fads or anything, which is really sad because there's no anvil. Otherwise, I'd have an anvil up here right now. If you want to submit a proposal, you go to unico.org. You find the link to uh, submitting a new proposal. And you could submit a thing saying how much you want an anvil emoji. There you go. Um, with all the new emoji that are being added, there are going to be issues with backwards compatibility. Because if you've got an old system, you're not going to have any of the new symbols. And then you get these wonderful characters popping up everywhere. Um, this is known as uh, emoji bake, or emoji bake, because I bastardize pronunciations of things because I'm a Westerner. Um, if you try to show your Australian smiley and your thinking face in your Unicode, you're going to either get a replacement character, a rectangle, or nothing at all. Which is really fun when you're trying to, uh, say, use Twitter on your mobile and you don't have the up-to-date characters. One place that emoji will work, though, and all Unicode characters will work, is URLs. This is a real address, spoon.ws. Spoon has been added in Unicode 9, so it's about a couple of months old now. You go to this URL. That is Spoon. This is defined in RFC 3492 and is known as a puny code, little code, which is a translation which allows you to use Unicode characters and translate them into Latin only, which will work in URLs. There is an entire algorithm of how this is worked out. It means that you can have uh, TLDs and domain names for languages other than English. So you, there are Japanese TLDs now, and this is how you get them entered in. Another wonderful standard, ISO 3166-1. Does anyone know what this ISO standard is? Flags. Flags. There are flags in emoji, technically. This is the Australian flag. You might uh, recognize it. Um, this is made up of two different code points. If you separate them, you get A and you get U. Flags are implemented in Unicode by having a regional identifier and another regional identifier right next to each other. If they map to an ISO standard country code, it will turn into the flag, which means that the Unicode consortium does not define what a country is, which is why there are only ISO defined country flags, which is why there have been uh, no response from them with uh, new countries wanting to get their flags added because they're not ISO standard. Um, one thing with these, so these are regional indicators. You don't, know, you don't normally see these anywhere. So if you're paying attention to when the ISO stuff came up before, you might see that they look a little bit off. And I hope you can't unsee that ever because I was just like, what's going on here? Normally you can't see these. So this is the Google implementation, by the way. Kerning. Input. Who knows how to put emoji into things? Yay! People have buttons like this on their keyboards. I believe on the iPhone, which I don't have, uh, there's a smiley face button and you click it and you get all the emoji that you can swipe around. Um, for Android users like myself, we have little buttons that look like this where the enter key would be. If you're using OS X, you can press the combination command, control, and space to bring up a nice little searchy selector thing. Um, on that note, this symbol, this is valid Unicode. This is not an Apple symbol. This dates back to 400 <laughs> AD as a, uh, it's the St. John's Arms, and it's used to represent a place of interest. Um, so that's kind of cool. Also, this is an official symbol as well. This is the option key. Um, you can have Unicode hex input as a language on OS X LCAP, which allows you to press and hold and key in the exact code for the 16-bit representation of your Unicode character. And until Windows 8, this was the only way you could enter in Unicode for Windows if you pressed and held Alt with the input. But why would you want to use a soft keyboard? Why not make an entire emoji keyboard? 
uh, Tom Scott made a 16 keyboards, sorry, 14 keyboards, all laid out on a table, all plugged into the one computer, a little bit of auto hotkey and a little bit of Lua script, and he could enter one emoji, one key for the entire emoji set. Yeah, uh, Tom Scott had a bit of free time on his hands. Uh, he also made the first emoji only network, Emojly. That went just as well as you thought it would. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, on the website, on the web, the internet, um, I'm an operations engineer by trade. I don't do Apple dev. I work a lot with the cloud. Um, and on the cloud, in various things such as uh, GitHub and Slack, we have short codes or, sh uh, yes, short codes. So if I wanted to have cake and I just wanted to type it using my normal keyboard, I would type a uh, colon, cake, colon, and I would get cake. But if I was using HipChat, I'd have to use brackets instead of colons, and it comes up with a different kind of cake because cake is not the same as cake. Short codes are not emoji. Party parrot is not an emoji. Ship it is not an emoji. These are quick hacks to try to get nice replacement images into your text. They are not Unicode. They will not go across platforms. If you are trying to do this on your systems, please let me disable autocorrect because there are some times that I don't want you to try to assume what I'm typing. Because if I want a smiley face, I do not want it to go up to 11 and be extremely happy. I just want a simple smiley. If I want to use what I recognize as a embarrassed face, I don't want to... I'm really worried about how someone's tongue ends up like that. Plus, it's green. I mean, come on. Um, so, reading things back again. If you have a sufficiently up-to-date version of your operating system, this will just work. Um, up to LCAP and iOS 9, you will get up to Unicode 8. On Yosemite, you still only get Unicode 6. Who here is still using Yosemite? Excellent. Everyone can get the upside-down face except for the one person using Yosemite. On the web, you cannot assume that people are going to have Unicode installed. On the web, you have absolutely complete control over what you show your users. So if I might make a suggestion, just use fallback. Use images. Don't try to be fancy. Because I run Reveal. Everything so far has been an image. The next slide is the only one with actual emoji on it. I'm running El Capitan, and it looks like crap. We have two emoji up there that are the text representation, not the emoji representation. And I have an empty box there. That's supposed to be a kiwi fruit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a website which I have uh, all the variations of the different fallback options here so you can test it on your various mobile browsers and other browsers. Um, this is the best I can do on LCAP. Sierra, we don't know whether Unicode 9 will be implemented. So we don't know whether this will work on the next operating system, which is sad. But here's the thing, on the web, you don't have to rely on what the user has. What you can do is you can raise the bar, you can use your highlights, you can use your mouse overs, and you can use web accessibility options. So what you can do and should do if you're trying to serve this on the web is use a little snippet of uh, image syntax code like this. So what we have, is we have our image, we have an alt text. Alt text is uh, what happens when you copy, when you select and copy over an image. The alt text is what's copied into your clipboard. So if I have an image in line with a bunch of text, it will copy the Unicode symbol for me. And when I do a mouse over, it will show me the description, which is really helpful because these little itty bitty tiny pictures, whether you're not sure whether it's lying uh, lying, crying, laughing, or an, a, a unicorn. Um, it's really helpful if you can tell what's on there. And for our extra bonus points for screen readers, if you add your ARIA label and describe what it is. So somebody coming along who's on a screen reader will be able to get told that it's an emoji tumble glass. Oh, by the way, we have a whiskey emoji now. Um, and if you're doing web stuff, because Unicode is cool, make sure you're using UTF-8 tags. If you're not, you're doing your users a disservice. Anyone who's not using a Latin-based character set is not going to be able to read your stuff. Now, this is a 
Mac conference. Um, I don't have an answer of how to do proper emoji accessibility on mobiles. Um, I don't have an iPhone, so I had to check on one of my friend's mobiles what actually happens now. Um, you can scroll through, and if you press and hold some of the emoji, it'll come up with the different, fit, uh, the different color swatches. But if I was going to try to make this accessible, I'd have something where if you were to press and hold, it would come up with like a little description or something. Um, if you have text-to-speech enabled, you can copy emoji into, say, notes, select the test, and ask it to uh, say what it is. But that's a little bit slow and cumbersome and may not actually work on mobile. So I, I don't have an answer here. But that's fine. You guys can fix it. The future. The future of Unicode. Guess what? We got new emoji last month. We now have such wonderful, timeless classics as shrug and facepalm. That's always great. Uh, there's now a duck, which is cool. Bacon is now an emoji. Uh, egg. Egg is finally emoji. Um, chicken has been in there since the beginning, so now you know which came first. <laughs> we already have some emoji slated for uh, release next year, including the uh, Stephen Colbert emoji. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, there's also some other suggestions that may make it in, like uh, giraffes, sandwich, milkshake, knitting, um, Hawaiian hang time sign, which isn't in there yet. Uh, but we'll see how they go. Um, also, uh, platforms are updating their emoji all the time. Uh, remember the flushed face from earlier? This is Android 4.4, Android 5, and Android 6. This is all the exact same character. It's turned into a duck. <laughs> Um, those of you who use Facebook, you may have noticed that everything went a little bit Van Gogh recently. Um, all the emoji are now brightly colored and looking just off to the side. Um, so that's fine. Uh, you still can get the old versions if you're using um, the slash message bit and not your little pop-ups on the web view and other weird places. So they use both at the moment, which is really weird. Um, Windows. Windows have fixed their emoji. This is what they used to have. And this is what they have as of now with Windows 10. So everything looks normal again. Because I that, that's the kissing face at the fourth from the left. Um, I, I, I can't. I make no comment. Um, they've, done, they've done a whole lot of really nice stylistic changes with their emoji, uh, including the improvements they did to the octopus. <laughs> I mean... It's still only got six legs, but it looks like an octopus kind of now. Um, the grinning and grimacing before, the one on the left is what uh, grinning was. And as of iOS 10 Sierra, this is what grinning is going to be. So it actually looks happy now, which is great. Um, the zero width joiners that I mentioned before, where you put two bits together, um, as of now, the Unicode standard is if you have a white flag and a rainbow and you join them together, you will get a rainbow pride flag and that is how you get the rainbow pride flag because unfortunately rainbow flag isn't a uh, ISO defined nation. Um, also coming in the new Apple stuff, gendered emoji. You can have a uh, female royal guard and a female policeman and a female all the things. You can also have a guy getting his hair cut, a guy having a head massage, and two men in bunny suits. Because that is perfectly OK. So I'm nearly done here. But before I go, just some takeaways. There's a lot of power in speech and communication, and emoji just adds another layer on top of all this. But you need to use it responsibly and think about your implementations responsibly, but don't forget to have a little bit of fun while you're at it, because it's sparkle. And that's all I had. Thank you very much.